hello it's Sarah I have some stuff a bunch of stuff all around me that I wanted to share I have been playing with my uh, jelly plate prints um, I have a whole stack here that I did and then some of them I went back and added stamping to and collage like this one um, I think I stenciled the white dots on here. I did like, um, I saw Patty Tolly Parrish do, she used, oops, this corrugated cord stock or it's actually just like cardboard, corrug corrugated cardboard. And you can dip that in paint and see these little, like these copper lines I got, I did that. This is plastic canvas. I stamped some black paint. And then this is just the um, this little flower stamp that I made. And then I doodled um, on top. So this was uh, totally, uh, I got this idea from Cat Hand, who is Cat Hand on YouTube. And she's been playing with mixed media and I, <clears throat> I just found her and this was her idea. <coughs> So I did it. I stamped, I pulled a jelly print on this Avery uh, sticker sheet. It's the regular uh, Avery labels, I think it is. Easy peel labels, like this one, right? This is a whole one. I stamped on it, I doodled, I did a bunch of stuff on here. And then you just peel off the stickers and she did, she showed how she did this little composition book and I did one so I did this one with all um, the stickers from this sheet all the same and then um, I did another one because of course I couldn't stop there I just did my little sketchbook this is just one of those cheap sketchbooks the pro art I think it's called um, that you get at um, I think I got it for like five bucks at AC Moore, and I used two different one, two different sheets this on this one. Um, so super simple. And then I just um, used matte medium on top to kind of put a coating on top of it. So that was really really fun. I actually painted a little canvas black, one of these kind of canvases. The like they're made of a board, a title artist medium I don't know anyway I painted that black but I decided to do it on this little book instead and I like how it came out I did the I did a down and I did a cross and I kind of liked a cross better but it was really fun so I'll put the um, link to Kat's YouTube channel in the description because she does a great tutorial for you on that um, so yeah but I've been playing so I also picked up some more um, of these Posca paint pens. These are the extra fine, I want to say, and it's it's hard to tell you. Like these are .7, just so you know, because I have two other sets, but they're all written in Japanese, so you can't really I can't read it to you and tell you for positive. But these are point or 1.8, .9, and then this is .7. Um, and I have all the same colors. I want to get some different colors too, but they're awesome paint pens, guys, if you haven't tried them. But like, see, look, on here, I just did, you can do these little dip dots so easily with that white one. And um, so, yeah, so that's what I did there. I also did this collage. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet with all this, um, with all these. This is, uh, a lot of paper here that I use. I use like a whole 50 pack of the Michaels Recollections paper. Um, anywho, this is just a piece of uh, file folder, not a heavy duty one, just a regular one because I didn't know what I was going to do. And I just painted it with blue, pink, green, purple, yellow, I think. Kind of just patchwork painted it and then just started ripping up the paper some of these papers that I have and I use them as collage so I just and then I, I also punched out shapes and stuff because I really didn't know where I was going or what I was doing I made some strips of them of some of the patterns I just I for those of you who do jelly printing 
what are you using like look at this how pretty it has hearts I just love it it's so pretty um, what are you using your papers for this one I just did a little bit of stamping on I did some of the cross hatch lines with this corrugated card in green black um, plastic canvas some bottle caps so just anyway but it's just fun like you could just do it all day but then what are you going to use them for so i'm curious um all right that's that then so yes yeah, so then i did because i made this stamp and i just put some of these lines on there and i have this stamp that i made put that on there and then like i said you can use your um, paint pens and do a little doodling i didn't do too much on here i did some of the um gold lines you know and a little bit of stamping but i really don't know what to do i don't know what else to do so i'm gonna i'm gonna figure that out i tried this this is um called i want to say it's called a paint skin and all you have to do is have one of these sheet protectors and some tulip paint and this is just the dimensional fabric paint that you can get at michael's been around forever and it has like a pretty narrow um, squeegee. I was pretty happy with that. And I just squirted it on, made a couple S's and then some diagonals both ways and let that dry overnight. Um, just the black. Then this morning when I got up, I took my palette knife and this, which is the golden gel, soft gel, but it's in the gloss. So not the matte gel, it's the gloss gel. And they suggest that one because when it dries, it dries clear, super clear. And I guess the matte medium dries with a matte sheen, not a shiny sheen. But then, and I'm, I'm thinking this is probably pretty dry. You're supposed to be able to kind of peel it off and use it in your... Um, collage work or in anything you know so I'm gonna figure that out I haven't um, maybe I'll start it out with a piece of uh, that's my what is this called there we go palette knife yeah so you just kind of get it going maybe I did it too thin I don't know this is my first time doing it but I think you can peel you're supposed to, yep here it comes it comes off in a sheet instead of just like the black lines coming off by themselves you can get it to come off in a sheet so i'm going to leave it on there because i don't really want to use it right now but you can see that then you could just lay this across now i don't know why you couldn't um <clears throat> just squirt it onto your piece and let it dry but I thought it was cool and wanted to give it a shot, so I did. So I have that. Then I got myself some Yupo paper. Do it on Yupo. This is a watercolor paper. It says a different way to watercolor. And this is actually made of polypropylene, 100% polypropylene. So it's, it's some kind of cool paper. This was only 10 sheets. I've already used about three sheets of it. And I was playing with my alcohol inks with that. And I'll show you that in a minute. And then I also got some deli paper because I never had deli paper and I got this on Amazon. I'm sure I, I, I didn't look at BJ's or anything. I just ordered it um, from Amazon, but it's kind of like a wax paper, but it doesn't like this is wax paper and wax paper's got a coating on both sides. This has only a coating on one side. It's more paper on one and waxy on the other. So um, I've been playing with that and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what I did. What else do I want to tell you guys? Um, that's pretty much it. I think I will go away and come back and I'll show you what I've been doing. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. And the first thing I have out here is some of the deli paper that I've already done. And I did it in such a way that it's very um kind of 
Well, I use the technique that I've been seeing a lot, and it's they just use a credit card to spread the paint on there, and that's what Cat did. Cat hand, and look at this one. I like swirled the paint on there. Um, just using some of my favorite colors. I already cut some apart because I used it for a background for um, an ATC. So this is the ATC. A couple of ATCs that I'm going to do. And that's on deli paper, but I used some metallic paint, some um, regular um, acrylic paint. So let me show you. I mean, it's addictive. Like you can just... It, it happens so, like this was way too red, obviously. Um, so I calmed down, I started calming down and kind of figuring it out. So I'll show you what I do. And this is, I believe, the non-waxy um, side. So I'm just gonna grab a couple colors. I like this metallic green, and these are just the Craft Smart Metallics, just because they were, um, kind of cheaper than the rest of them at the time. I'm going to use some white. I like having the white in there. And a little bit of the fuchsia. And this is just a flat fuchsia, but it's a bright fuchsia. And then, and I've applied the paint in different ways. Like I've swirled it. I've done all types of different stuff. But basically what I've learned is I hold the the credit card very flat and kind of really smush the paint down so push it down and then you get it on the um, credit card and then you can use that to kind of blend it and I think less is more because I've done it where I had to blot my page off with another page and it's just too much paint because that's just my MO is too much but look how easy that was now look at that. Look at this just cool striations, right? So I was going with like if it was going to be like a, like this one was, um, I'm just going to make it flowers really I think, but it kind of looks like horizon lines and stuff. So anyway, that was just something really quick and easy and that's it. That's all I did when I painted my um, uh, deli paper. So, I mean, I don't know what else you would want to do to it, but you could just stamp on it or rip it and collage it onto stuff, right? So, anyhow, then I have my glove on because I'm going to do the Yupo paper now. And let me see, I'm just going to pull some of these into the shot. I was playing earlier and with my alcohol inks, and I have the Adirondack Earth Tones or I, I think they're, well, they're all by Adirondack, but I think some are, yeah, they're all Tim Holtz. These are all the Tim Holtz ones, right? Yeah. Um, so I have a few different colors. I have, this is the Mixatives. I have the gold and silver Mixatives, and they have little, like, balls inside of them to shake it. But I really don't understand how these work. So I kind of played with them a little bit, and then I also have some of the blending solution and I'm going to show you what I found out about that too. So before I show you what I did, this is just some traditional um, UPO stuff that you see. Like if you've watched any um, UPO paper tutorials, this is what you do. You just kind of drip it and let the alcohol ink blend out onto the paper. Um, so I did a couple of those and this one kind of just got, I started, oh, oh no, I used blending solution on that one. I'll show you, I'll tell you what I did. All right, let's see. This is the traditional, so is this, and then I just put the silver, see how the, the silver just sits there like a dot? It doesn't bleed out, so I don't know what I'm doing or not doing because I don't know if it's supposed to bleed out or not, but I kind of like it with just having the silver dots on it, so it's fine. So those two are kind of traditional, and here's just a bigger version of that. I just, I think I was like just throwing the dots down with this one. I kind of took the bottle and just went and tried to splatter it, you know, and see what would happen. And I think it got a little mixed, but not too much, because I wasn't liking it when it got too mixed. Then this one was when it was way too mixed. I put some of the blending solution on a paper towel and just blotted 
and this is the the reaction I got. I actually picked up quite a bit of it, but it also left that texture. So that was really cool. Another a different look. Okay. Then I did one that I hated, and it was way too blended, and it the colors were muddy and got ugly. I just put alcohol or I'm sorry the blending solution all over this whole thing and wiped it up and then after I was done blotting this one I just kind of put that color on there so this is kind of a really pale I mean I like it so much better now than it was when it had all the color on it I kind of regret putting the the stamping on there but I it doesn't look that bad um, but that was using the blending solution to take off the ink. This one was just a traditional one, like one of these. But then I just put four dots, of, or maybe five, of blending solution and just let them puddle out. So I have traditional ink on there and then the blending solution, what that did. And what it does is it literally blends them. So like when you look at this one, these don't blend. They kind of overlap and sit on top of each other. The red actually goes on top of the purple. Um, or they kind of just meet and they stop and they form that line, that hard line. And I like it. I think it's pretty. But when you look at this, where you put the blending solution, it all softly blends the colors together under there. But then it has these hard lines where the blending solution ended. So then... I did this and this was just a big one that I did with um, I did it in teardrops like I kind of put spots down but then I tipped the paper to kind of let them and as it dried it formed kind of like an oval shape and then I did a couple this way I kind of filled the whole page and they were they were pretty separate they were pretty good but then I just decided I took the blending solution and I just squirted it. Like if you hold, if you squeeze the bottle, you can squirt like along the top and drenched and saturated the whole paper. I'm gonna show you what I did in a minute. And then just let it blend and the whole thing blended. And that's what you get. You get this like tie-dye effect. So I did a couple of them. This one and this one. This one I actually did it this way and then I turned it this way again because it had like a bunch of ugliness down here and I don't like how that one worked as much but I think I would be willing to like hit it again and see what happens you know but it's just showing you that that's what that blending solution does it actually makes the color blend together instead of staying in this type of pattern which I do like so I just did just for um let's just show you I, I cut these um pieces of Yupo into um, ATC size pieces. So I'm just going to show you and in my experience it's hard not to make a big dot. Um, I love this color this oh wait not the purple toilet. The wild plum really comes out like a, a fuchsia but it's hard to not make a big dot so I'm gonna oops and it even spattered just then it's really hard to control how big you make these dots. Oh, I want to put it on um, a paper towel. See, and I just turned it and like let it drip off because there was a lot there. And it's, now it's settling and going back. But I'm going to go away and come back. So, um, let's see. I'm really going to try and be See, I can't. I can't be gentle with it. It just really wants to fall. It falls out. And look how messy it gets like around the tip. It even gets messy around the tip. So I think I'm going to wipe off. Now, that I've done this quite a bit, as you can see. And I'm still kind of figuring it out. Now, this blue is gorgeous. This is, they don't have a name. Like, I must have gotten them in a set. Yeah, this doesn't even have a name on it. Um, but I'm going to wipe off the top first. I'm going to wipe it off as best I can and really try not to touch these. I want them to stay separate. Nope. Oh, and it just falls out. It falls out and falls down and then it puddles on the top. 
And I mean, that's a lot. Like it's really hard not to put a lot. I'm just saying. But see what's going on? It just kind of, the Yupo paper pulls it. We'll see if it touches. We'll see if they actually touch. I'm gonna put a tiny, oh, I can't. This one is a leaky one. This one, I mean, maybe I could actually tip it and get some of that off, just so it won't go too far. And they also say like, maybe you shouldn't touch the Yupo paper and put your sm finger smudges on it and stuff because it will react differently to the oils on your finger. I mean, the, the alcohol ink will react differently to the oils that you leave on it from your hands, which I mean, could be, I'm not a professional. So let me see, I wanna add, I love this yellow. I'm gonna use the yellow, sunshine yellow. And I'm gonna try and just put it in these little spaces, but watch what happens. So that one didn't come out too fast, but watch what happens. It pushes, it almost pushes away the other colors or it overlaps them, see? Friggin' cool, isn't it? I'm gonna put a big one here. But look at that, I already got like kind of an orange where the um, yellow and the pink overlapped. That should kind of be turning green, yellow and blue make green, and it did, like in the thicker part, it definitely looks green, right? I think that's good enough. Like that kind of fills it already. But let me show you, I did this one earlier. This is just, I tried to do it the same way without kind of overlapping too much, but it's hard, it's really hard. Like these, um, somehow the dropper lets it out so easily. I don't know, it escapes. So now I have my blending solution, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put the tripod, hmm. You know what, I'm gonna put it over this side because I'm right-handed and this way you'll be able to see as I squirt this. And let's see, do I want the blue? Um, I don't know which angle I wanna go. I think I'm just gonna do it how I did it before. So I'm gonna squirt this along the top and just let it fall down right on top of my napkin. Isn't that cool? I mean, that was a decent squirt, but I hit the whole thing and it's kind of puddling on the bottom. You see the puddling? So I took a Q-tip last time and while it's still kind of wet, I just went along the bottom and took that bead off and it, it still fills in so you don't really have that yucky part and kind of almost just tap it on the paper towel too. Isn't that pretty? I don't know what that is on there. I must have gotten a hair or something on there. Isn't that so cool? I kind of want to do it again. Let's do the one I just did. I'm gonna set that aside. Or, which one should I just, which one should I do? I wanna add more color to that one. This one, I'm gonna do this one. This has orange, red, purple. Let's see what this one looks like. So again, I'm just squeezing it, really giving it some pressure so that it was like a line. And you can see it's kind of dripping down the bottom. I think my finger might have done that, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna use the Q-tip again and just wipe it along the bottom. I'm not sure if my finger is doing that. The only other thing I've ever done with um, the um, alcohol inks is I just kinda, I think I pounced with the alcohol, the ink blender. So I think that might be what, I'm gonna grab that real quick and try and do that other one and see what happens with the blending tool and just see what happens. Cause um, I kinda like how this just makes it look um, 
I don't know, tie-dyed or something, right? Isn't that cool? Especially, look how this one turned out. That's super cool, right? I don't know. It reminds me of stained glass or something. So here's my, um, I haven't used it in forever, so hopefully I'll find a piece. I have it. I don't know, it's kind of an old piece here. And I'm going to put some of the blending solution on this kind of like felt, right? So let me set this aside. And then I'm going to come back in to this one that we just did. So let me put some on this felt. And let's just stamp and blot. I like that too a lot I like the modeled effect I don't want to like get the colors to that looks pretty cool doesn't it I like that so that is another I kind of like using the blending solution I think and look the more it's like you take off the color and then it kind of beads up So this is on Yupo paper. Now I don't know what this will do on anything else like a different type of paper. Um, I've only done it on a non-porous surface like a domino. So I'm just going to see if I can grab a domino real quick. Um, not sure if I have them handy, but I think I do. So here's a domino, and I'm just going to put a couple colors on here. You know what? Here's how they do it. They put the color onto the felt. That's how I did it before. Hello. And then one more. I'm going to put, I want to put yellow, yellow, blue, and purple, and the blending solution. So let me just put a little more blending solution and let's see what this does. Oh my God, that is so pretty. I think it's better if you just, you can't keep going back in because see how it got brown? It got brown, it gets muddy. So I probably put all the wrong caps on these things now. But it's pretty. It's very like it is. It's stained glassy looking, right? All right, so I'm going to come back and I might do that ATC. Um, but if not, all right, you guys, try some alcohol inks and Yupo paper. Thanks for watching.